Hey y'all, so today I'm gonna be building a pretty beefy extension cord and in many ways, it's probably gonna be over-engineered because for the most part, all the extension cords that I currently own are like this one right here. This is inexpensive, it's 16 gauge wire, but I wanna be able to have an extension cord that then I can power my larger tools more efficiently and I'm gonna be able to plug in more than one at once. So I'll have multiple plugins. So let's go ahead and get started with wiring this up. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna work on is getting this cord attached to this male plug. So the way this one works is these prongs come off for now. Then we've got the bottom portion of the plug here. This is where the cord is gonna go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this cord up through the plug. So now I'm just gonna cut the jacket around all of the wires. I don't need to take a whole lot off. And I'll do that just by taking my knife and just barely press into the jacket as I cut. And as you can see here, it cuts very easily, so you don't need to put a lot of pressure on it and therefore hit the wires that are underneath. All right, so as you can see, I've got three wires. I've got a black, a white, and a green. Of course, black is line, white is neutral, and green is ground. Now they call this a 12-3 wire, 12 being the gauge or the size of the wiring. And then the three generally denotes how many conductors there are. However, with this particular cord, they also count the green ground in that number. Whereas with NM wire or Romex, the three is going to denote how many conductors there are. So you would actually probably have black, white, a bare copper wire, and then probably also a red wire for another hot wire. But all of these are insulated, and so this is going to be a 12-3 with this particular wire. All right, so now I'm gonna use my wire strippers to strip off the insulation off of each of these wires. Not a whole lot needs to be stripped off. All right, so now I've got all the insulation stripped. Now I just need to put each one in its designated slot. So I'm gonna start off with the green ground and on the plug, you can see there's this green ground screw and then we're just gonna put it in the hole by the green ground screw. And then once it's in there, I'm just gonna tighten it all down as tight as it can go. All right, so next I'm going to put my white neutral wire into the plug. And the way that we know which one it's supposed to go under is there's this silver screw over here. That's where the neutral is going to go. So I'll go ahead and put my neutral wire in underneath of that silver screw and then tighten it down just like I did with the ground wire. And so then that just leaves with the black line wire, which is going to go underneath of this gold screw and then just tighten it down. All right, so now that all those are firmly in place and I'm going to pull the sleeve and put it up over the plug. Once that's in place, I'll just tighten down these screws here on top and that's going to connect the plug portion to the sleeve. Now I need to flip the plug over and screw down these screws which are gonna tighten up these jaws and pull it all together down onto this cord to hold it all in place. All right, so there we go. So now the male side is all done. So I've got my double gang weatherproof box here and this is made of metal. And by having this weatherproof box, this is gonna be key for being able to use this outside. Then I've got this part here and a lot of people use these for strain relief and they do provide strain relief for the cord so it's not being pulled at all different angles, possibly damaging the cord, so that'll be really nice. But it serves more than one function. The cord's gonna be fed up through here, through this mesh looking part, and if you push it together, you see how it gets bigger, it gets wider. But as that cord goes through, and once I get it to the point of where I want it to, I'll let go, and of course this will come back down and what that's going to do is it's going to provide for that cord to not be able to be pulled back out of the box. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this all expand here by pulling it all together. And then I'm going to take my cord and I'm going to start feeding it up through that mesh there. And I want to keep pushing it through so I have enough in my box. I can always cut some off. All right, so there I've got it to about the length that I want it to. And now as you can see, now that I've let this relax, now if I go to try and pull it out, I can't get it to budge, it won't move at all. So it's stuck in there, it won't be pulled out of this box. So with this particular strain relief, it's not tall enough to get all the way through the threading to then take the lock nut, tighten it down on top of this to hold it all into place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my wire up into the box, then I'm gonna take some thread locker that's made by Loctite, and I'm gonna put it on the threads of the strain relief. Then I'm going to take my box and put it onto the threads and just start spinning it on. So I'm just going to make sure that it's down nice and tight into those threads. And famous last words, that's not going anywhere. All right, so there we go. Now I've got all my wiring ready to be all wired up. 
But since this is a metal box, I need to make sure that the box itself is grounded as well. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need to make up a few pigtails for the ground wire itself. So now I've got my three ground pigtails, but I'm also going to need a couple of jumper wires to go between two of the outlets. So I'm going to need one black line and one white neutral as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my ground pigtails and I'm going to put a hook in it to wrap around this ground screw that's down inside of the box. So I can do that by just using a pair of my wire strippers and there you go. So then I'm going to take that hook and I'm going to wrap it around this ground screw down here in the box. And once I've got it wrapped around that ground screw in a clockwise direction, I'll take my screwdriver and tighten it down tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my ground wires and pigtails I'm going to attach them all together. Then once I've got them all together, I'm going to start pre-twisting them and then putting a wire nut in on top. All right, so now all my grounds are joined together and I can push this into the back of the box. All right, so now let's put this off to the side for a little bit and let's talk about the outlets that are going to be going into this box. So first of all, you can see there's a difference between these two outlets. This red one over here to the left, of course, it's red and that really doesn't designate anything with this particular outlet. I just like the way it looks, so I got it. But this is a GFCI outlet. Now you'll see down here at the bottom of this outlet, and actually also this one as well, it says WR. WR stands for weather resistant. And the difference between weather resistant outlets and regular outlets is really the components of it. So weather resistant devices are going to have nickel plated contacts and also mounting straps so that they can prevent corrosion from happening. Now, with a GFCI, you have a particular place for your line and your load to go. So on this one, your line wires go up here, your load wires go down here. These are the wires that are gonna go on to your other outlets. And then of course on the bottom, there's gonna be a green ground screw to slide the ground wire into. So because I want this GFCI receptacle to protect this receptacle, I wanna make sure that this one is first in line getting the power, and then this one is being fed by this GFCI. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these over to the back. So my load terminals are these down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna start off by putting in my white neutral wire and it's gonna go in again on this side that has the silver terminal. So I'm just gonna take my white neutral wire and I'm gonna slide it up underneath of this little clamp here. And once I've got it in place, I will just tighten it down using a screwdriver. And so now that's in there nice and tight. And then I'm going to take the end of the white neutral wire, I'm going to slide it into this hole here that's on, again, the side that has the silver terminal screws. And then I'll just tighten it down. So now I'm just going to take my black pigtail, I'm going to do the same thing, except for in this case, I'm going to connect it again on the load portion, so this terminal down here, and underneath of this black terminal. And now I'm going to connect it up underneath of one of these gold colored terminals on this other outlet. All right, so now these two are tied together and now this GFCI outlet can now offer protection for the standard outlet. Now, as I'm making this, I can already hear some of the comments that I'm probably going to get on this, or I guess I should say, I can imagine some of the comments that I'm probably going to be reading and they're probably gonna read something like this. That's not OSHA compliant or don't show up on a job site with this or OSHA is gonna fine you. And to an extent that is actually true. Uh, a lot of people used to use these on job sites back in the day, and I imagine somewhere along the way somebody got shocked by one, and OSHA has basically said that you cannot have homemade extension cords on a job site. So, in the rare event that OSHA would show up on your job site, and if they see one of these, you're probably going to get a fine for it. But as far as using one of these for personal use, I really don't think that they're just going to show up at somebody's house and find them. In fact, I know that they're not. But if you're uncomfortable at all with building one of these or using one of these, then definitely don't make one. That being said, if you're liking the content of the video so far, please do me a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up button right down below. It really does help the video to spread to more people and hopefully help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so now I am ready to insert these into the box and wire it to the extension cord wiring. All right, so first wire that I'm gonna hook up is this ground hook that I've got here. So I'm gonna take that ground wire and wrap it around that ground screw in a clockwise direction and then tighten it down. So now this outlet is completely hooked up. So now all we need to focus on is this GFCI over here. So I'm gonna take that last remaining ground pigtail and just slide it up underneath of that clamp and then just tighten it down. 
So now I'm ready to connect each of my line wires. So I'm gonna take my white neutral wire, I'm gonna connect it up underneath of this silver terminal screw here. And again, it's at the top of the outlet where it designates as where the line wires go. And I'll take my last remaining black wire, which is the line wire that brings the power, and connect it underneath of this black terminal screw up here on top. All right, so now I'm ready to screw down and set my outlets into the box. All right, so now for the most part, you could just take a cover and slap it on top of here, and this thing would be ready to go. But that's not the route that I'm gonna go. I still wanna show you guys how I'm gonna make this thing weather tight. So don't go anywhere because I wanna show you that. Otherwise, if I don't make it weather tight, some of these components I install on it are gonna be kind of pointless for installing. And I also have a couple of ideas and features that I wanna to add to this that are gonna make this a little bit more accessible and more convenient to use. All right, so now I'm ready to add my cover, which is going to be weatherproof, and this is the base for that weatherproof cover. And as you can see on the bottom portion here, it's got weather stripping all the way around to keep the elements out. And so this is just gonna slide right over my outlets. So once I've pushed all of the screw heads through that larger portion, once they're through there, then I'm just gonna slide it over to the right. It's gonna line everything up. And then once everything is lined up the way that it should be, then I'm just gonna tighten those screws all back down. Now I can take this cover plate and I can connect it up here at the top where these little hinges are. And once it's all lined up, you just slide it over to the left and it pops into place. We've got our weatherproof cover in on top now. Now I'm gonna wanna be able to put this and mount this in numerous places. So how can I do that? Well, I can just hang it from places by the wire if I wanted to, but that's not exactly ideal. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over to the back side. I'm gonna take a couple of rare earth magnets and I'm just going to put a couple of them on the back of the box here. So now with these on it, as long as I'm around metal, I can pretty much hang it anywhere that I want and it'll stay there as long as I want it there. Another way that I just thought of that maybe would work in order to hang this places is these boxes come with these tabs and these are actually the mounting tabs that go right up here in the corner and then you screw them down and then a screw gets run through this way if you were mounting this to a wall or something like that. So my thought would be to screw those down in place like you normally would. And then you could just take a piece of wire and run it through each of those holes and then just bend it back to itself using some pliers. And now I've essentially got a handle or something that I can use in order to hang it from somewhere using a screw or a nail or something like that. So now I'm gonna take this reciprocating saw and just plug it in here to the GFCI first and just make sure that we've got power there. So we're good there. So now I'm just gonna remove it from the GFCI outlet and make sure that the standard outlet that's down line is still getting power as well. And it looks like it works. So also as just an added bonus for having this cover on here, if you look up here really close, you can see that there's a hole right here and it goes all the way through to the base of the cover as well. And what that's for is you can put a lock through it so that this can't be opened. And this is gonna provide just a ton of security because obviously you can't smash this with a hammer or anything. So it'll definitely do a great job of keeping people out of there that are trying to get to all of the copper that's underneath of this cover attached to these outlets. But in all seriousness, I think it's just there if you wanna put a lock there as more of a deterrent so that people don't just open the cover and just use your power whenever they want. And the other nice thing about this is you can do this with pretty much any extension cord. If you already have some that you really like, maybe you just wanna do it right off the bat or maybe you've damaged it, ran over it with a lawnmower or something. I don't know why it's out in the middle of your yard, but if it's damaged, you can just lop off the end and do pretty much what I did here. And now you've got a brand new extension cord that may even be more functional. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, you can leave those down in the comments down below. And I hope to see y'all in the next one. See ya.